Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityurma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Om, lead us from the unreal to the real Lead us from darkness unto light Lead us from death to immortality Om Peace, peace, peace. Good morning and namaste everybody. This morning, the subject is very interesting. Asangoham. I am unattached. I am without attachment. The self without attachment, this is the subject we are going to talk about. I remember reading about this young man who saw Swami Vivekananda at his own house. Swami Vivekananda say, uh, when visiting Trivandrum in 1892, uh, before he came to the West. So he stayed at the house of this person, uh, Ramaswami, K. Ramaswami Shastri. So in his reminiscences, he says that Swami Vivekananda came to our house and he stayed um, with my father. I was a young boy at that time. One day Swami Vivekananda said to me, You are young yet, but I hope one day you will reverentially study the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutras, the Prasthanatraya, the foundations of Vedanta, as also the Puranas, the Itihasas and the Ag Agamas. You will not find the like of them anywhere in the world. This is, these are Swami Vivekananda's words. And then, very interesting, he said to this young boy, The essence of all these sacred books I will tell you. Always remember them and try to live up to them. So Swami Vivekananda said, very interesting, four A's in his inimitable way. He said, Abhaya, fearlessness. Ahimsa, non-violence. Asanga, non-attachment. And Ananda, bliss. Huh? Again, Abhaya, fearlessness. Ahimsa, non-violence. Asanga, non-attachment. And Ananda, bliss. So, Ramaswami Shastri, he says that, I don't know how much I understood at that time, but I took it to my heart. And ever since in my life, I've tried to uh, live up to these uh, ideals and practice them in my life. But remember, notice the word, Asanga is there. Uh, among the four, the third one is Asanga, non-attachment. That is our theme today. I remember when I was a novice, the ashram I joined under, there was a very great monk um, whom I shall not name. Uh, I'm very, very grateful to this wonderful, uh, one of the most wonderful monks I have seen in my life because my entire spiritual life has been um, shaped by him, so to say, uh, in my initial days as a, as a monk. Uh, all my training, my, you know, the formation of my monastic life, I entirely owe it to him. So this wonderful Swami, uh, one day I asked him, uh, what is your spiritual practice? What is your spiritual practice? And he answered in one word, asanga, non-attachment, detachment. He said, asanga. So this is what we're going to talk about. Um, just to get something out of the way first, it is not the just the asanga, the non-attachment of the monk that we are talking about. Yes, as a monk, we walk away from our families, from uh, uh, special relationships with human beings, from possessing money, from um, owning property. Uh, that is true. So that is de detachment and definitely it's a characteristic of monastic life. But it is a, a practice and a principle, there's a philosophy to it, which, is, which should be there in everybody's life. I remember having this conversation with another very senior Swami who visited us, Swami Atma Priyanandaji. And we were talking about how this highest Advaita, especially the, the, the practice of Asanga, is something that actually householders, people in the world need more than monks. Because you see, monks cut away the relationships 
and stay at a distance, uh, you are already protected from many of the ups and downs of the world. But if you're in the middle of, um, you know, you, you own property, you have money, you hold a job, you're in the middle with, with the relations with family and community, you are subjected to so many pressures, pulls and push. So there, it is there that this practice, this principle and this philosophy will come to our help, tremendously so. So this is something for everybody. We are not just talking about the, uh, the external detachment that, that is, of course, practiced by monks, but something deeper which can be and should be practiced by everybody. And we will see today how an investigation of this leads us to the very heart of the non-dual teaching, the very heart of Advaita Vedanta. Very important. This is one takeaway and one word takeaway from the whole thing. Asango aham. Asango aham means I am not attached. I am without attachment. What does this mean? How do we practice it? Uh, let us follow this uh, thought and see where it leads us. Specifically, today's theme is based on a verse from a, a, a stotra, a hymn, a, a chant basically, uh, which is uh, popular among monks, not so well known outside the monastic community. It's called the Brahma Jnana Vali Mala, um, ascribed to Shankaracharya, as many things are. Um, it's just the essence of Advaita Vedanta, non-dual Vedanta, and, and the way and the practice put in some Sanskrit verses, very simple Sanskrit verses. So today we'll just take up the, the first verse is introductory, the second verse. Uh, asango ham, asango ham, asango ham, puna puna, satchidananda rupo ham, aham eva ham abhyaya. Very simple Sanskrit, very rhythmic. Uh, asango ham, I am without attachment, without attachment am I, without attachment am I. Again and again, see this truth, consider this truth, meditate upon this truth. Then what am I? Satchidananda rupo ham, I am of the nature of uh, existence absolute. Um, knowledge absolute, bliss absolute um, and avyaya, I am without decay, I am immortal, without change, without death and then ahameva, I am, I verily am so we start with that, the, that ahameva notice your own presence, let us no notice our own I am indubitable, the first fact about ourselves, before, prior to all facts is this greatest of facts, I am. It is only when this I am shines forth that the rest of the world shines forth. In the words of the Upanishads, Tameva Bhantam Anubhati Sarvam Tasya Bhasa Sarvam Idam Vibhati That shining, everything else shines after it. By its light, everything is lit up. What is that? It is you, the I am. The I am shining, everything else shines by the light of this I am, which is shining in, in all of our hearts, I am. By the light of this I am, everything in our lives is lit up. So we start there, the I am. And then we notice, Asangoham, what is the nature of this I am? It is claimed that it is without attachment. Now immediately, you see, when we think about I am, the first thing that comes to uh, our attention is the body. And we make the first and the fatal error. I am the body. We are aware of it, but we think we are it. We don't even cons um, question it. But as the body, I am the body, one cannot be without it attachment. The body is definitely very attached. It is affected by everything in the world outside. It, food, we need food to sustain this body. We need air to breathe. We need clothes to wear. We are subjected to heat and cold. Everything. We, can, we can't say I'm detached from the world. I am the body and I'm detached without attachment to the world. Impossible. You're fully integrated into your physical in environment. Um, so we go around everywhere. People are wearing masks. Why? Because the environment around this invisible um, COVID uh, viruses are there. Uh, it will affect the body. You cannot say I'm detached. Go away virus. I'm detached. No, you are not. You're very much part of this environment. The body gets affected. I am as the body will not be uh, without attachment. It is not the body. When we say I am, it's not, what, not the body that is meant. It is not even the mind. The mind is very much attached. What happens to the body affects the mind. 
sickness affects the mind little weakness in the body little pain in the body affects the mind the behavior of other people affects the mind our own successes and failures affects the mind ups and downs very difficult to say the mind is by itself detached it's not detached it's not unattached asangoham will not uh, apply to the mind or the body it is to the witness consciousness that i am unattached it applies there you see i as awareness am unattached i am aware of the mind i am aware of the body and through the body and the mind i am aware of the world but i the awareness which is the, which is this i am this is awareness it is unattached to the world to the body or to the mind how this works first of all this i am this awareness this is where i expend most of my energy is trying to explain how am i this awareness i have spoken about on many occasions uh, so you i will refer you back to uh, those drig drishya viveka and aparoksha anubhuti and uh, you know the panchakosha viveka the avastha tray of the mandukya many many methods methodologies to find out how i am awareness how i am consciousness i am not the body not the mind i am the witness of the body and mind these are changing i am unchanging i am consciousness these are objects i am sentient these are insentient in all of these ways we are asked to notice and to discern ourselves as awareness apart from the body mind aware of the body mind using the body mind and interacting with the world but uh, detached from all of them awareness is not attached to explain this i will introduce a technical term from advaita vedanta a wonderful term upadhi upadhi uh, it's um, very difficult to translate into english but the examples are very uh, are simple enough uh, upadhi is something that is present near something else and appears to transfer its qualities onto that other thing so example classic example in vedanta which is given is a crystal a clear crystal which is colorless and then you put a red flower behind this crystal and once you put the red flower behind the crystal when you watch it from the other side the crystal looks red colorless crystal red flower in sanskrit spatika spatika means a colorless uh, clear crystal and rakta japa the, the the red flower the red china rose for example which is put behind the crystal and from the other side the crystal now looks red put a yellow flower it looks yellow put a pink flower it look pink but the crystal in itself is neither yellow nor red nor pink uh, even when it looks when it looks color without color it is without color it is clear even when it looks red it's actually clear it's not red at all even when it looks yellow it's actually clear uh, it it is uh, not yellow at all huh? so um this uh, exactly in the same way i the i am the awareness when the body is present and i am not aware of myself as the body when i'm not aware of myself as the uh, uh, i'm not aware of myself as consciousness and the body is present just like the the crystal becomes identified with the uh, red color i am this awareness becomes identified with uh, the body and i feel i am the body uh, thoughts feelings perceptions in the mind uh, they are present but they seem to put themselves in this the, the clear crystal of awareness and i the i the awareness this i amness becomes pervaded by as it were by the mind and i feel i think i am happy i am miserable i am in pain yeah. all of these things come the qualities of the upadhi are transferred unto the entity so the quality the red color of the flower it looks as if it is transferred not really transferred it looks as if it is transferred to the red to the crystal the colorless crystal appears red similarly consciousness itself awareness itself which i am you know it appears like i am a body i am a mind so the body and mind appear and they appear to transfer their qualities so i am tall i am thin the tall and thin qualities of the body 
But I am tall. I am, the awareness is not tall. How can consciousness be tall or thin? How can consciousness be overweight or skinny? Even the qualities of the mind are transferred onto awareness. Happy, sad. These are uh, qualities of the mind, just like the red color of the flower appearing in the crystal, looking as if it's in the crystal. Similarly, when when the consciousness shines upon the misery in the mind, I am miserable. This is what happens. We are unable to distinguish between the two. Even when the body and its qualities appear in consciousness, even when the mind and its attributes appear in consciousness, I, the consciousness, the I am, is asanga, unattached. At no time is the crystal red. At no time am I the, the I am. Am I a body? Am I the sickness of the body or the pain in the, bo- in the body or the up, um, unhappiness in the mind? None of them. Though they appear. Though they appear. An eminent Buddhist teacher, a uh, teacher of Tibetan Buddhism, Jackson Peterson, he sent me a picture, a photo recently, a few weeks ago. Uh, he just, I think he was having breakfast and he saw this and he took a picture and he sent it to me. It's a wonderful example of Upadi. What was the picture? He had a glass of clear water, a glass of water. And behind it was a glass of orange juice, yellow. The glass of clear water, colorless. The glass of orange juice, yellow. Now when you look at the glass of water with the orange juice behind it, outside, in another glass, the glass of water now looks like orange juice. Because it's yellow there, and here's the glass of water. It looks, the photograph was taken so beautifully. It just looks like two glasses of orange juice. But it's not. The glass of clear water is clear water. There's no color to it. Similarly, the I am, which is not a body. Now looks like, feels like, indubitably seems like a body. It's not a mind. Now it it feels like, internally, like a mind. I say with confidence, I am tall or or skinny or I uh, am happy or miserable. I know so much. I do not know much. I am forgetting. It is awareness, which is aware of all of these things, shining upon them. So Bill was here uh, here a few months ago. He was saying, my memory is not what it used to be. So he's 96. I am forgetting. Don't be unhappy. You are the one who was aware of the keen memory. And you are the same awareness, which aware of the failing of the memory. You are perfectly all right. He chuckled. I don't think he was convinced, but uh, yes. I am unattached. Then only you can say, Asangoham. Notice this. First of all, of course, you have to go through the process of realizing that I am awareness. This sense of presence which I am. This feeling of I am. Start with that. Notice that it is awareness. And this awareness is uh, in the presence of upadhis. Upadhis, those in English sometimes it's translated as uh, incidental adjunct. It makes nothing clearer. (laughs) I I think the crystal and the red flower example makes it clearer. Or the orange juice glass and the clear water glass, that example makes it clearer. The presence of the body-mind, when we are not aware of ourselves as awareness, we begin to think of ourselves as body-mind. And then then we don't think about it. It becomes indubitable. Then we cannot say we are unattached. But as awareness, the I am, which is just awareness, even in the presence of these upadhis, which are not me, but they seem to transfer their qualities upon me, I am still unattached. Even when the glass of water looks orange, like orange juice, it is not at all attached to orange juice. No orange juice is present there in the glass of clear water, though it looks exactly like orange juice. Not a little bit of the red color is present in the clear crystal, though it looks completely stark red, but there is no red color present there. It is unattached to the redness or to the flower. the The glass of water is unattached to the orange juice or the yellow color. You, the I am, the I am within us, in us, is unattached to the body and its troubles, is unattached to the mind and its ups and downs, forever. This is the meaning of asangoham. Consider light. How light, the sunlight, brilliant day out there, 
Its sunlight is illumining everything, buildings and roads and people and dogs and trees. Everything, flowers, everything is illumined. The brilliant fall colors out there, the water, everything is illumined by sunlight. But the sunlight is not sticky. Sunlight doesn't stick to anything. Light doesn't stick to anything. Here the light illumines everything in the room. The room was empty. Now a few of us have come into the room. The empty room was illumined by this light. Now we are here, we are being illumined by this light. But when we leave, the light will not stick to us. Whatever is present is illumined by light. And the light does not stick to it. Light does not go away with, with it. Similarly, I am this awareness. Whatever comes, which whatever appears in awareness, we illumine. I know, I see, I smell, I hear, I touch, I think, I remember, I perceive. All of this is illumination by I am the awareness. Just like light. Just as light is not attached to the objects it illumines. Nor is light affected by the objects it illumines. If it illumines um, a clean vessel, it's not that a light has become clean. If a light illumines a, a dirty vessel, is the classic example in Vedanta. A dirty pot. Light illumines, shines upon a dirty pot. The light doesn't become dirty. Similarly, when I am, I shine upon a healthy body. I am is the same thing. I am not more healthy because the body is healthy. When I shine upon a diseased body, I am and the body appearing is diseased. I am not diseased thereby. Same with the mind, the ups and downs of the mind. I, the I am, is the witness. I am is the witness of what? Everything. And this witness is like light. And Sakshi, because it is Sakshi, Sakshi means witness. Because it is Sakshi, it is Asanga, unattached. I am unattached to everything because I am like light. Awareness is like light. Aham eva, I am. This presence which I am is like light, unattached to its objects, whatever it illumines, good or bad. It does not become good or bad. Yeah. Because light illumines uh, um, a glass of water, does light become a glass of water? No. Because I am, I illumine, I reveal the unhappiness in the mind. Why should I say I am unhappy? No. I reveal the unhappiness in the mind. And you know the amazing thing is, the moment you think like this, not a kind of trying to convince yourself, try to see that it is a fact. When you see this is a fact, the unhappiness in the mind actually calms down. It sort of disappears, dissipates. Even the body, it becomes healthier when we stop clinging to the miseries and the pains of the body. Let the pains and aches and little, today it's well, tomorrow it's not well, today energetic, tomorrow tired, or the same day, energetic, tired, not so well, well, not attached. I reveal all of it. Let these things come and go. I don't stick to it, just like light doesn't stick to its objects. Just because the body is feeling sick, why should I say I am sick? Just because the light reveals, um, say, a puddle of dirty water, does the light say, I am a puddle of dirty water? No, that's silly. I am the light which reveals the little problem in the body, little problem in the ups and downs in the mind, no matter. Notice another thing, the light is open, it doesn't resist anything. Whatever comes in the light is illumined by the light. Whatever comes to you, to us, the I am, is revealed by this I am. We don't resist. The opposite of detachment there is at, uh, the attachment. And attachment comes with attraction and repulsion. We uh, try to stick on to things which we like. We try to resist and run away from things which we dislike. But light is not like that. Whatever comes within its purview is illumined by it. Whatever goes, it goes. Light does not try to hold on to something. The poet William Blake says, whoever holds on um, to a joy uh, doth kill the winged life. But he who uh, kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. So when things come, welcome. 
come and say have a cup uh, stay have a cup of tea <laughs> people come um, you know health comes illness comes uh, pleasure comes pain comes success comes failure comes good i'm like the light come welcome take a have a seat have a cup of tea i have to go you have to go all right namaste yeah. tata we don't hold on to it nor do you resist it by our very nature the i am is like that but remember asanga because it is detached it's fine with what comes and goes at no point is it attached to anything therefore it is not affected just because i am aware of a glass of water do i become a glass of water that's silly similarly the i am it shines on everything it does not become that because it is sakshi so because you are sakshi this i am is the sakshi the witness therefore asanga say to yourself asango aham i am unattached unattached i am another um, approach is the adhisthana adhisthana means the ground of this universe see the light example is limited one must know how to use these examples in non dual vedanta the light example is limited light shines on everything but the light is not everything it reveals all these things light is revealing chairs and people and carpets the altar but the light is not a carpet or a chair or or people it reveals everything that's all but it's different from them but this i am the presence this is also the underlying reality of whatever it reveals that's very interesting it's like a movie screen on a screen a cinema plays there is the hero and the villain and the uh, fights and car chases and explosions and floods and earthquakes and space battles all of that is taking place but the screen of the movie is completely unattached asango aham it is like we say i am the screen is but it is unattached to the movie in fact because it is unattached to the movie the movie can play imagine if the screen becomes attached i like this character uh, bugs bunny or mickey mouse i'm going to hold on to that character then the movie cannot work the character cannot come and go if the, if the screen holds on to a character if the screen dislikes a character won't let it enter then the movie cannot work it has to be completely open to everything allowing everything to happen and yet completely detached from everything now that's the movie screen the movie screen is absolutely unconcerned you play a horror movie you play a tragedy you play a comedy a war movie whatever you play one after another you play the movie the screen is completely unattached to any of them is completely open to all of them whatever comes and goes completely non resistant whatever comes i'm open to it welcome and when it goes good not good riddance good goodbye take care you're welcome to come and play the movie again tomorrow and it's perfectly all right with no movie also it can be a blank screen at every point the screen is exactly the same notice the difference between the screen and the light example the screen gives existence to the movie it is on the ground of the screen on the reality of the screen that the movies can play similarly the i am the atman the brahman which we are is not only like a light but it is also existence it gives reality to everything that we experience everything in our lives everything in your life is built upon constituted on standing on the ground i am you are the reality of everything in your life and therefore you are without attachment just like the movie screen to the people who come to your life to the objects your property and thoughts and ideas and feelings and opinions political affiliations you are unattached i am they were not there earlier they are there now they will not be there later i make it all possible because i am i reveal all of it because i am i shine but i am unattached asangoham without attachment i am mm-hmm. this is called adhisthana the ground of reality mm-hmm. it is the ground of the universe what is the ground of the universe you that presence i am mm-hmm. how is this possible how is it 
that if you are the ground of that, a li- light can be unaffected by what it illumines. But if you are the reality uh-huh. of something, then whatever happens that should affect you. So, for example, it's no use saying that the wood is the reality of the altar and the wood is the ground of the altar. But if I scratch the altar, I am scratching the wood also. If I pollute the waves in the ocean, I am polluting the water also. So it gets affected. How can you say that if you are the ground of everything that that we are experiencing, then how can I be unaffected by it? How can I be unattached? Because what happens in the world, if I am the ground of it, it is affecting me. Notice something interesting about the movie and the screen example. The screen and the movie are not at the same level of reality. Uh-huh. Compared to the screen, the movie is fiction. Uh-huh. At the level of the screen, there is only light and sound. But the characters in the movie, the activity in the movie, the explosions and the earthquakes, they are not real like the screen. They are an appearance. So here I'll introduce one more important term, crucial term in non-dual Vedanta. This is called vivarta. Vivarta. Vivarta means appearance, the theory of appearance. Without actually being transformed into anything, all those things can appear. The screen does not get transformed into the hero or the villain. It does not get transformed into a volcanic explosion. It does not get transformed into cars and roads. And yet the villain, a hero can chase the villain in, on a car, on a road. All of those appear on the screen. They are not as real as the screen. The reality and the appearance are not at the same level of truth. And therefore, the reality can remain unattached with the appearance. The rope and the snake, in our classic example, are not at the same level of reality. The rope appears as the snake. In Sanskrit, in Vedanta, it is said snake is the vivarta of the rope, the vivarta term. The movie is the vivarta of the screen. Vivarta means appearance. Not real transformation. A seed is really transformed into a tree. Uh, uh, Milk is really transformed into yogurt. But the rope is not really transformed into a snake. The screen is not really transformed into the characters of the movie. No, those things just appear. In fiction, like a movie, or in error, like a snake. Mirage. The water in the mirage cannot wet even a grain of the sand of the desert. Repeat that. The water, all the water which appears in a mirage, cannot wet, is not enough to wet a single grain of sand in that desert in which it appears. Because it is not real like the desert in which the mirage appears. It is called vivarta. That's why these examples are favorites of non-dualist teachers. <coughs> is it possible that this whole universe which is appearing is like a movie, like a snake and a rope, like the mirage in the desert? A good example is our dreams. The mind by itself, when we fall asleep, the mind by itself can project an entire world. There are people and places and activities and good and bad and you are yourself there in your own dreams. You are yourself enjoying or mostly suffering. All of that is projected by you the mind, the mind of the dreamer. Notice that the mind does not become any of those things. It only appears as those things. Not that you become a tree or a house or a place. You just, it's imagined in the mind. Very vividly so. And so therefore you can say, I, the dreamer, am completely unaffected by my dream. Terrible financial loss in the dream. You are none the worse off when you wake up. Wake up. Being chased by a lion in the dream. You are not scared at all when you wake up. Because those things are not real. They appear in you. You are the ground of that dream. Because of vivarta, you can be the reality and not be affected by what is happening in the appearance. The reality is not affected by appearance. So this is an important uh, uh, concept in Advaita Vedanta. Whatever appears in consciousness is vivarta, an appearance in consciousness. Not that consciousness has become those things. Whatever appears to you, the presence, I am, your world, people, events, Whatever is happening in the body, whatever is happening in the mind, they are all appearances to you that I am. 
and they are appearances they are not as real as the i am because they are vivarta of the i am they are appearances of the i am the i am is unaffected by it all very crucial it's important for the peace of our mind if one has grasped this even in understanding even before it becomes a vivid reality it is a vivid reality it's our misfortune that we don't see it but once you grasp it uh, you can really enjoy life nothing in life really it it will not bother you it will not um, uh, upset you uh, you can enjoy life and you can contribute your best to life you can live life to the fullest advaita vedanta non dual vedanta is not for wiping out the experience of life you don't have to switch up the movie if it the movie upsets you you don't have to switch up the movie you just have to realize oh it's a movie after all similarly in life i am aham eva but asango aham i am not attached to anything because of this because why because of upadhi because of sakshi witness because of adhisthan it is the ground of all reality and because of vivarta that it is an everything is an appearance in consciousness everything is an appearance of you the i am to you in you and therefore it cannot affect you you can say i am open to it all everything will come i resist nothing nor do i stick to anything nor do i pursue anything i enjoy it all as it comes and goes in deep serenity and peace i can honestly say asango aham unattached am i asango aham asango aham punah punah again and again i can say i can notice this about it's a fact about me Advaita Vedanta is not about wiping out the experiences of life. Sitting quietly in meditation, I will don't want to confront life. No, there's a new term for it: spiritual bypassing. You can confront all the problems of life with the clear feeling: asango aham. I am completely unattached with this little pesky little problem. Now let me deal with it. To the extent possible, we'll deal with it. We can deal with illness. We can deal with uh, economic problems. We can deal with our uh, academic problems, our uh, relationship problems, whatever problems are there in life. You can deal with it. Things will be slightly better or slightly worse. Fine, as long as asango aham. I am not really affected by any of this. I was there before all of this. I am exactly the same during its existence, and I will remain exactly the same. I am this presence. after it has gone now one more observation notice that not only are you the i am not attached to anything but but nothing is attached to you either <laughs> that's an amazing thing in life quite apart from philosophy quite apart from all of this vedanta non dual vedanta just look at the facts of life who is attached to you which person is permanently tra- tied to you nobody parents they and grandparents they grow old and they die and pass away children grow up and go away husbands wives spouses partners they come and go B- your bosses coworkers your juniors they come and go and float around in your life they were not there at one time what was not there to begin with it may be there now but be assured it will not be there good or bad does not matter whether you like it or dislike it they will go one day objects how much how many things have passed through our lives you know gadgets and furniture and uh, artwork and so on many things have come and gone in our lives <laughs> food a buddhist meditation exercise very interesting he says imagine the amount of food that food that you had for breakfast and for lunch put it all your breakfast and your lunch in front of you and your dinner in front of you and then add yesterday's lunch uh, breakfast lunch and dinner on the same table and then day for yesterday's imagine the pile of food growing soon it will be bigger than the table just your lunch and dinner and breakfast bigger than the whole table and then shift it out to your um, floor within if you put a few days worth of food which you, we have eaten ourselves in and it will overflow your carpet space you have to take it out to your lawn very soon if you imagine the amount of food i have eaten uh, the the description is buckets of rice 
and entire cauldrons of dal and, and um, huge cauldrons of vegetables uh, all on the lawn arranged. You will think which demon ate all that? That's me. I did. Imagine the food that we have eaten in one year. Mountains and lakes of, of soup and vegetables and rice and what not. And the amount of food that we have con consumed in um, um, 30, 40, 50 years, 80 years of life. That has all come and flowed through this body. None of it stays. Nothing in this world, objects and people and relationships, the places that we have been to, they all come and go. None of it sticks. Not only am I unattached to the world, the world is also unattached to me. It's my foolishness that I try to hold on to it. You may say in all of this, Swami, it is all good philosophy. But we are ignoring one thing. Maybe because you are a monk, you are mentally not attached to things. But we are people in the world. We are attached to people. We are attached to places. We are attached to little objects and things. You know, so many attachment. You are not. You think you are. Consider the greatest attachment. And one monk said this. A mother with her child, a young mother with her baby. The greatest attachment in the world. And that has to be because that's how the uh, baby is taken care of. But when that mother finally falls asleep, I am uh, told that mothers, young mothers hardly get much sleep. So when she finally falls asleep at night, she forgets the most precious thing in her own life, the baby. And she happily goes into deep sleep. She forgets the world, the baby, her own body, everything. And goes into deep sleep, not attached. If you are really that attached, you would be desperately unhappy going off to sleep. I am losing contact with the baby. No. We, are not going to lose. we don't think in this way. It's a weird way of thinking. But it's true. Even the greatest of attachments, how long do you think about it? Once in a while. Whether it's money or possessions or gadgets or uh, dog or whatever it is. You, it comes and goes. You are not really attached to it. You think you are attached. You are not attached. Every night you lose sight of everything that you think you are so attached to. All gone. And no guarantee that you will ever wake up. So, nothing in the world, even this precious body, is attached to us. It changes. Youth and middle age and old age and death. Body also goes. Body is not attached to me. My most precious memories, my knowledge, all the knowledge I have accumulated, reading books over years and years, it fades away. And then one little stroke or Alzheimer's or something, it will simply go. All my skills, abilities, my health, all goes. Nothing in the world is attached to us. Money, money is the least attached to you. <laughs> in, in India they say Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, is restless. She doesn't stay with you. It comes and goes. It circulates. And that's good. You know why it's good? When we hold on to something, when we are attached to something, we hold on. We think, I am holding on to money, to people, um, to places, to gadgets. I am holding on to it. It's mine. When you are holding on to see, notice something. I am also trapped here. Yeah. I am not free anymore. I am caught. I cannot go anywhere. I am caught. If more we hold on to something, the more we are caught. Sri Ramakrishna gave the example of a river in full spate is a flood. flood. Flood tide is going on and things are being swept away and the villagers, poor villagers looking at all those nice things being swept away and one man couldn't take it anymore. He saw the fine rug being swept away. So he jumped into the river and mightily swam up to the rug. When he went up there he saw it was a bear being washed away. And of course the bear caught hold of him, bear hug, hold of the man. And the people on the bank shouted, let go of the rug, you will drown. And the man shouted back, I let go of the rug, the rug doesn't let go of me. That's the nature of attachment. When we mentally attach, we become stuck to it. Say, asangoham, not only am I detached from everything, everything is, um, nothing is attached to me at all. Nature is ever in change. The Buddhist monk who said, This too shall pass, O king. You know the story. The Buddhist monk came to visit a, a royal court. And the king complained. said, Oh revered sir, my troubles are endless. 
um the kingdom is surrounded by enemies and we haven't had a good harvest in years and people are in, in poverty and my ministers are corrupt and my young son the prince is in com- i mean he's not doesn't seem to be interested in learning how to rule the kingdom oh what will i do and the monk said this too shall pass o king and then he went away 20 years later he came to the same kingdom and the king was very old by the time and the monk was also old and he came and the king recognized him and he said oh monk you had visited us 20 years ago well i'm glad and he said how are things so king oh i'm glad to report things are much better we have made peace with the enemies and there have been bountiful harvests and the people are happy and the min- corrupt ministers have been replaced and the and the prince oh how wonderful he has come up to be a most upstanding young man and i'm so glad i can leave the kingdom to him with peace of mind and the monk said this too shall pass o king <laughs> <laughs> every situation passes away <laughs> so asango ham say asango ham that is a fact of life it is it seems to be something that monks practice it seems to be a spiritual practice it seems to be a philosophy but ultimately it's just a fact of life it's good to recognize it you will be happy that way our mistake is to think that by catching hold of things and being attached we'll be happy and we take a lifetime to learn the lesson that's not the way to be happy the way to be happy is to be asanga unattached and enjoy everything that comes by that i am but i am unattached asango aham then the, what is the nature of this i am satchidananda roopo aham the standard vedantic teaching this unattached i am what is this i am this presence notice it is sat chit ananda what does it mean i am i exist the very meaning of i am is i exist this isness this existence not body not mind by itself is sat just being just this isness just this presence i'm not talking about anything mystical you can all feel it right now that is the first fact the primordial fact about ourselves that i am this is called sat but this i am is normally we think i am this body it's a limited existence how i am here not there i'm limited in space i was born in such and such time and i will die at such and such time this body that's also limited in time i am this one and not that one this is called limitation in object all these limitations if you remove these limitations if you look at i am by itself the isness is not limited anywhere that isness is not only here it's there and there and there it's everywhere so that isness unlimited isness is called sat not the isness of one body the unlimited existence is sat the unlimited awareness that awareness which is behind all thoughts and all perceptions good and bad thoughts intelligent and foolish thoughts all these fleeting thoughts come and go in the, in the background is one awareness that's also part of the i am part means it's one aspect of the i am that is called chit unlimited awareness unlimited existence sat unlimited awareness chit and ananda bliss is this very unlimited nature of existence awareness see bliss ananda is not a particular kind of pleasure not a particular kind of joy it is that unlimited nature of existence and awareness that itself is called bliss in sanskrit purnatvam or ananta infinite infinitude not a limited existence not a limited awareness but unlimited awareness existence itself is bliss you see now bring um the two other concepts which we talked about import them into this concept the two concepts are uh, upadhi and vivarta upadhi remember like the orange um, juice present near the clear water making the clear water look yellow or the red flower present near the crystal making the crystal look red upadhi bring it here what is upadhi here this very existence awareness existence awareness sat chit it appears as existing bodies and existing minds so these are upadhis body mind they appear 
and they appear to put their qualities like the red flower making the crystal look red like the orange juice making the clear water look like orange juice similarly the body makes the i am look like i am a body the mind thoughts and feelings makes the i am look like i think i feel i am happy i am unhappy no 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 you are and in your light these these upadhis are shining they are appearing to put their qualities on you be careful you are not happy or sad you are the i am in which the happiness and sadness are appearing just like the red color color of the flower in a crystal or the orange color of the orange juice in uh, or the yellow color of the orange juice in um the clear water so this is upadhi and so you see so the i am the isness awareness is there and plus there is a body and mind these things are also there no bring in the second concept vivarta appearance bodies and minds are appearances of the i am very deep concept here the i am the screen itself is appearing as the movie there is no separate body and mind see when you talk about crystal and flower they are two separate things the red flower puts its red quality apparently in the crystal that's one concept that's a concept of upadhi but now imagine there's no separate red flower at all it's just the i am the consciousness which projects vivarta like a snake appearing in a rope body and mind appear and then that body and mind function as upadhi by vivarta the i am appears as body mind universe and because they they are like upadhis they appear to put their own qualities upon the original i am i'll repeat that the crucial concept in advaita vedanta the i am start with it it's our experience i am the experience of i am this i am now appears vivarta like rope snake appears as body mind universe first it's vivarta this body and mind and universe which are nothing but that i am which i am that now starts putting its own qualities on the i am the i am now looks like a, i am a body i am a mind i am a person i am the limitless i am now becomes i am sarva priyananda and what's this this is a universe apart from me although the whole thing is like a snake appearing in a rope like a movie in a, a screen or like a um, like a water in a mirage yeah. but it appears to be separate now and now i start interacting with it just like a dream so these two concepts bring them upadhi and vivarta and it explains how the universe and the body mind appear uh, in i am that i am is nothing but existence consciousness sat chit unlimited existence consciousness the existence part of it appears as all the objects the consciousness part of it appears as the the witness consciousness it appears as all the knowers the consciousness part of it appears as people the knowing minds the all this which sees hears smells tastes touches which thinks feels is happy unhappy all of these are vivarta appearances of consciousness and all the objects that we see things they are vivarta appearances of existence and all that we value in life the happiness that we are chasing the pleasures that we are chasing the unhappiness that we experience they are all vivarta appearances of ananda the bliss aspect the chit aspect appears as all the knowers all jeevas including god ishwar and jeeva they all appear as vivarta appearances of consciousness all objects of the universe from atoms up to stars and galaxies they appear as vivarta of existence existence appears as these things and all the happiness and sadness in the universe they appears as vivarta of ananda of bliss what is happiness and uh, unhappiness what is pleasure and pain so i like the example that rupert spira gave he gave a be- beautiful example he says the vast blue sky is always there but imagine clouds have come now because clouds cover everything once in a while a patch of blue sky appears 
the patch of blue sky which appears and then is covered over again that is what we call pleasure the unaffected blue sky in its all its vastness and infinitude is always there but we don't see it when we see patches of it we call it pleasure happiness and we keep looking for that and when the cloud comes and covers it darkness we call it pain and suffering but the original blue sky is always there and completely unaffected that is ananda bliss very nice it is when the clouds part a little bit of the, that ananda shines through and we call it our pleasure our our happiness our fulfillment in life oh if only it would we can hold on to it but inevitably the clouds come and cover it up in those clouds we call unhappiness but behind the clouds completely unaffected whether clouds are opening up or closing up completely unaffected is the entire infinite blue sky untouched by the clouds that is ananda nature that satchidananda i am i am that satchidananda satchidananda roopo aham aham avyayam i am undecaying not subject to death destruction why not see what is subject what is death and destruction it is created it exists then it was destroyed it was born and it lived and then it died that is dis- destruction that is vyaya decay and death old age disease death but creation now and then time time itself is an appearance in you the i am you are not in time time is in you time cannot destroy there, there can be no beginning or end of you in time hence you are avyayam you are not subject to death you are not limited by space here and there uh-huh. all of this space it's actually appearing in you the i am the i am is not in space we think i am a tiny being in the vastness of space why because i am identified with a body in a dream for example when we are identified with one body in the dream i am in there in the dream the entire space in the dream looks like a vast world in which i am walking around and experiencing things but the truth is when we wake up that entire thing was in my mind similarly this entire universe is in the i am space is in in the i am and the i am is not in space therefore nothing in this space can ever destroy you can ever affect you or change you and this i am is non dual other than this i am nothing else is there other than brahman other than sachidananda if there is something other than existence it will be non existent so there's nothing apart from that isness the the uh, infinite isness awareness which which is our reality which we are the i am is avyaya is beyond death beyond disease completely unaffected put it all together asango aham asango aham asango aham punah punah satchidananda roopo aham aham eva aham avyaya aham eva i verily am what asango aham unattached am i unattached am i unattached am i unattached to what all the appearances notice this again and again throughout life one of the greatest monks i met i told you what is your spiritual practice swami he said one word asanga and what is my nature then this unattached i am your nature is unrestricted infinite isness immortal being there is no death for you death is something that happens in time even time is within you is an appearance in you death is something that happens in space even space is within you satchidananda roopoham i am of the nature of infinite isness i am of the nature of infinite awareness there is no unconsciousness for you even if the mind fails and goes to sleep the blankness of the mind is also uh, watched by you see the movie screen is not only not attached to any of the movies does not resist any of the movies is also is not unhappy when the movies are switched off mm-hmm. it does not look forward to the rest that oh when will they stop playing these stupid movies i can get some rest no and when the um uh, the blankness is there it does not hanker when will the movie start again perfectly all right the presence and the absence of the movies makes no difference to it it is unrestricted unlimited awareness chit i am and remember that vast blue sky it is of the nature of 
unlimited happiness, unlimited bliss, which is once in a while manifested to our minds as the little patches of blue sky in the midst of uh, the clouds. But that whole blue sky, I am. Aham eva, that is my real nature. Forever, it is already there. This is the deep philosophy of asanga, the unattached self. I pray to Sri Ramakrishna, to the Holy Mother, to Swami Vivekananda. May we have this epiphany, this, this breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough in this very life itself. And attain to our spiritual heritage. It's already there. We just have to discover it, uncover it, claim it for ourselves. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu